Welcome to Overbiked Randoneering, a YouTube channel that focuses on the equipment, strategies, and training for efficient long distance cycling. It's getting very dark quite early this time of year, so it's a great time to look at bike lights. Uh, there are three main characteristics that we really want for a bike light for long distance cyclists. They need to be bright and broad enough to ride at a fast pace, they need to last through the night, and they shouldn't blind oncoming traffic. Many endurance cyclists prefer a dynamo solution for lighting, where the rotation of a wheel creates electricity to power the light. These are often designed around the German traffic standard STZVO, and so it results in a beam that is evenly distributed and projected on the road, and a hard cutoff that doesn't dazzle oncoming traffic. Dynamo systems also scale their light intensity with the speed. So the faster you're going, like on a downhill, will result in a brighter light. Use cases like commuting, touring, and ultra cycling in remote areas are ideal for dynamo systems. Dynamo systems have one glaring drawback though, and that's that the energy for the lights come from rider effort. It's like reverse motor doping. Long distance riders typically only produce 100 to 150 watts consistently, while the most efficient dynamos powering a strong front light only have been tested to cause more than 9 watts of drag at 25 kilometers an hour, which is a normal randonneuring pace. Most dynamo models also increase drag even when they're unloaded. The added drag makes them difficult to recommend, and is why I haven't had the urge to recreate the Sun Dynamo system I had several years ago. Randonneuring blasphemy? Maybe. Uh, but it's hard enough to do already. And who am I to deny the law of the conservation of energy? If you disagree, hey, let me know in the comments below. And if you passionately disagree, you should hit that subscribe button too, because there's more content on the way. Instead, battery-powered lighting systems are ideal for most long-distance road cyclists today. Light output can now match or surpass what is practical to produce with dynamo systems, and there is even little or no weight penalty. Few randonneuring events are so remote that batteries can't be charged during a break or when you're sleeping. The major downsides of battery systems are needing to be mindful of battery levels, the risks of charging in the rain, and difficulty choosing a proper light. For example, the wide flood beams of mountain bike lights vomit light everywhere. The trees, the sky, and if you're using them on a road, the eyes of oncoming traffic. Lights marketed towards road cyclists these days advertise ineffective anti-glare lenses, often in the form of some ridges molded into the top third of the lens. Cheaper commodity bike lights use narrow spotlights to project only a small patch of suitable brightness and only a short distance up the road. Most of these also lack either a large battery bank or a mid-sized battery plus the ability to charge when turned on, which facilitates riding through the night. Let's look at two battery lights that meet our three requirements at an approachable price. These occupy the low end or entry level of lights suitable for long distance road cycling. Finally, I'll recommend higher end lights that not just meet, but exceed the requirements of a long distance road cyclist. First, we have the B&M Ixon IQ Premium, a venerable design from Germany that I've seen on many randonneurs bikes over the years. It sports four AA batteries for easy replacement on the road and a claimed 80 lux high beam good for five hours. B&M advertised the light measurement in lux, which is lumens per square meter. My four rechargeable AA batteries are rated to almost 10,000 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts. So nearly 37 watt hours of total capacity. The light has two settings, high and low. It's made of plastic, but has no waterproofing around the clamshell opening for the batteries. The weight is 110 grams empty, with each set of four AnyLoop Pro batteries weighing 122 grams. The retail price is 120 euro, but it's currently on sale for under 60 euro online. I paid much more for this six years ago, and pricing outside of Europe is pretty bad. The mounting system for the Ixon IQ Premium is a proprietary pinching mount for round handlebars. Mounting is only possible in an upright configuration perpendicular to a round handlebar. Swept bars will point the light off-center and it can't be adjusted. The adjustable clips often fall off during installation, but once they're installed, they're really solid. In my years with this light, it's only fallen off three times during use, and each time it was my fault. Second, we have the Lumentop B01. It's the USB-C type. It's a newer flashlight design out of China, and it's powered by a 5000 milliamp hour 37 volt uh, 21700 cell. This totals about 18 watt hours total capacity. 
The cell can be replaced or charged from a battery bank while the light is turned on. And this is an exceedingly rare and desirable combination of features. Uh, the 550 lumen high setting is claimed to last for five hours. The high quality aluminum housing has heatsink milling, uh, a knurled grip, and a knurled aluminum screw cap with an O-ring to seal the battery. Lumentop claim an IPX8 waterproof rating, which is another very rare and desirable feature if it's actually true. The B01 and clamps are 155 grams without a battery, and each 21700 cell weighs 68 grams. After a local online seller failed to deliver my order for like a month, uh, I bought this one from the Lumentop official store on AliExpress. Including the largest battery cell, an extra USB-C taillight, and shipping, it totaled 35 US dollars. The B01 comes with a rubberized plastic C-shaped mount. It attaches to bars with a band tightened by a plastic ring. The rubber C and band clamp are connected with a small bolt and a captive nut. Uh, this offers some lateral adjustment. As a result of this and the B01 having a round body, it can be mounted in a wide range of orientations. Uh, the mount hasn't failed yet, and other people online have reported that it secures the light well, but I just don't trust it. It doesn't look like it should work. Instead, I'm going to go with an aftermarket GoPro Universal flashlight mount. For taking photos, I used ISO 500, white balance 3800K, F of 1.8, and a 1 6th second shutter speed to achieve the best accuracy of how the light actually looks uh, to how it shows up in the pictures. Still, the camera lens was unable to pick up the dimmest light at the edges of the beams. The Lumentop B01 starts off strong with a neutral to warm light color and strong intensity. The beam is mostly uniform even at a distance, with a slight bright spot in the center. Light is thrown quite far and the cutoff is effective. A uniform secondary beam is visible directly in front of the bike, and the total width is slightly wider than a road lane. In use, the B01 provides a suitable throw distance and light intensity for pretty brisk riding in most conditions. The beam is more narrow than I prefer, and actually peripheral vision is somewhat lacking. The B01 has no flood effect in the lens, so very little light is projected outside of the main beam area, so I have a hard time understanding what's going on around me outside of where the light's pointing. This requires that turns and curves be taken a little bit more slowly, as they are often not in view of the light. The full charge actually only lasts for 4 hours and 15 minutes, which is a little bit less than advertised. Next, the Ixan IQ Premium produces a very cool tone light, which has a negative impact on color and detail. It also appears dim, much dimmer than the photos on B&M's website. This is likely due to camera settings and their purposefully designed environment, having white walls and ceiling with a medium gray tarmac. The beam makes a distinct T-shape, with most brightness projected pretty far, just below the cutoff. The dim light is evenly projected in the periphery, and its effects are boosted by the low contrast offered by the cool white tone. The light illuminates two full road lanes at its widest point, and this is at a far distance. On the road, the IQ Premium is surprisingly adept considering how weak it looks in photos. As the eyes adjust to kind of low output, the T-shaped beam pattern shows merit. The most intense light at the top of the T keeps me looking far ahead, aware of oncoming obstacles and with time to react to whatever's on the way. The T is wide enough to aid in cornering too. Peripheral vision is satisfied with the dim floodlight effect. That said, this light offers the minimum brightness I would consider acceptable, so speed should be kept under control. Those with poor vision may want to skip this one. The high beam did last an impressive 5 hours and 45 minutes. The winner of this comparison is obviously the Lumentech B01. Uh, it feels very well made, and it offers features not available on much any bike lights, much less a $35 light. Uh, technology's moved on a lot since I bought the Ixan IQ Premium in 2016. Unfortunately, design hasn't. Most lights still are not designed as they should be for long-distance road cycling at night. Uh, here are a couple of options that are upmarket from the Lumentech uh, that you should consider. They have intelligently designed beams, enough brightness, and electric systems that are suitable for riding through the night. First, we'll go back to B&M. Their 150 lux Ixon Space Light has a reported 18 watt hour battery that can charge via USB while turned on. Eight power settings fine tune output and battery life, and it uses either a poorly reviewed pinch mount system similar to the Ixon IQ Premium, or an optional GoPro mount, which would be recommended. Just beware pricing outside of Europe. 
Next, from the USA, outbound lighting makes the detour light, which maxes out at over 1100 lumens. It has a permanent internal battery with 19.8 watt hour capacity that can be charged while on. The detour uses two shaped beams, a flood and a spot beam, to maximize efficient light placement. Uh, this works in a way that STVZO lights are not allowed to do. There go the Americans stepping on the rules. It has an optional GoPro mount in addition to the standard mount that puts the light in line with the handlebars. Pretty arrow. Light color looks to be a neutral tone, and according to the pictures, the beam pattern looks to be wide and even, fully illuminating a little bit more than one lane of road. The only downside seems to be for non-US buyers. Distribution and service is handled from the main office in the US. Otherwise, the detour looks almost perfect. Lupine from Germany offers several very high-end but very bright STVZO lights that all meet the stated requirements. The SL series includes the AX, AF, and Nano AF versions, and they use a proprietary battery bank in a wide range of capacities up to 99 watt hours. Massive. Unlike with other lights, these banks should be considered the whole bike power solution, and they do offer options to charge other USB devices, of course, for an extra fee. If you can purchase extra 34 watt hour batteries for it, the BM IQ XM seems very similar to the Lupine lights. With lights this bright, the needed battery capacity for long rides actually starts to get kind of heavy and may be a consideration for buying the smaller lights. Maybe a lighter wallet will help balance it out though, who knows. So did I miss anything important? If so, let me know in the comments below. Ride safe, randoners.